all this evil is created. Yes. Yeah. So their creation, now we're talking about these things foreign to God's creation, so anything evil or that is created by the exercise or the unlawful exercise of man's will, their creation was the relative of something more than what the founder of that science calls the mortal mind. For the mind is only a part of man's being. And while the faculties of the mind must be used in the operation of all the powers and qualities of man, yet the mind is not the originator of all his desires and appetites and emotions. The emotional nature and affections are distinct from the mere mind or the intellectual faculties. And as regards sin and error, are generally the creators of the same. Although the mind may and does foster and increase these things so created. Now this is such an important paragraph, I'd like to read part of it again. It says basically that the emotional nature and affections are distinct from the mere mind and are the creators of sin and error. So, we're not, so I'm not saying here that the mind is the creator of sin and error. I'm saying the emotions and appetites and desires that are out of harmony with love, out of harmony with law, are the creators of sin and error. Mm -hmm. And this is something I've been trying to get across to people for years and years and years, right? And, and I find it so interesting that even people who are what I would classify as Paget affectionados, <laughs> yes. people who have read the Paget messages uh, very regularly, they do not understand the importance of, of grasping this concept. Mm -hmm. Because this concept is, is very clearly stating that the emotional and affectation nature, affection nature of the soul, which is not a part of the mind, is the actual creator of sin and error. And so if, if it is the creator, it therefore makes sense that the only way to remove sin and error is to remove the things that create it in the emotions and affections. Yes. Not use your mind to do something different. Yes, yeah. which is why you, why you say to Padgett earlier, it's the necessity. First, we have to understand how and by what means these things came into existence. So you're saying, yep. look, these Christian scientists, they're all saying it's all a part of their mind. They've just got to change their mind and these things won't exist. But the problem is they don't understand the causes. Well, it, yeah, and, and the, the proof is that that isn't true. Many Christian scientists have died yes. as a result of their, of their sicknesses because their mind, and they often say their mind wasn't powerful enough to cure it. No, mm -hmm. it's because the, the, the creation of that problem was coming from their soul, not their mind. Yes, yes. And denial of it doesn't make it go away. No, but even then they just say, well, death isn't real anyway. And so it's just a whole uh, Another level of denial. kind of level of denial. Exactly. Yeah. Um, whereas I love that the truth is, no, our experience means something. It's here to teach us something. Yeah. And what happens is a great way to know ourselves and ultimately to know God. Yeah. And so and what I was getting at, though, was you were saying, no, you have to understand the causes. And here you tell us the causes. Exactly. Which is, it's not about the mind. It's about these emotional parts of ourselves that yeah. create the problems. But I'm not saying that the mind isn't a part of the re remedy because the mind is, as I've pointed out in this paragraph, it's very, very important for people to understand the proper use of their mind because the mind can be used to either support the negative direction that a person has taken or to actually try to help them take a positive direction. Mm -hmm. it, the mind is a very powerful tool that we have if it's logically used to assist us in, in certain directions, one way or the other. And this is why it is so important for us to understand that the mind is a part, or and, and certainly a part that needs to be honoured with regard to sorting through these particular issues, but it is not the creator. Mm. It, it's not the thing that created these particular desires foreign to God's creation. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I, I said here, then man must understand that these excreances to his perfect creation are real and existing and result in his own damnation and alienation from the good and are antagonistic to his original and natural condition of perfection and that they, they cannot be swept out of existence by the mere assertion that they are not real. Mm. Now, in some of the uh, talks I've given in this century, I've talked about you know, sweeping 
our rubbish under the carpet <laughs> and then everybody walks around it saying there's no rubbish anymore yes. when it's all just hidden under the carpet. Or, or I've used another extent, uh, illustration of putting all of our, our excrement, excrement in a pile <laughs> in the middle of the room and everyone walks around saying nothing stinks. <laughs> and, and that's generally what we do with a lot of our... Um, with a lot of our uh, creations, we, we we sweep them under the carpet and say, oh, you know, we didn't do that. <laughs> we didn't do that. Nobody owns up to that. And, and in fact, everybody uh, has a tendency even then to say that it's not even a problem, that yes. it doesn't stink. Yes. And and we need to come to terms with the fact that these creations that we have created, both individually for our own personal life, but also collectively, which affect all of humankind on earth, they are creations that we can't sweep under the carpet and they are real. We just got to look around us and and we see all the reality of them. Yes, and and that they are antagonistic to original and natural condition to our original and natural condition. Yes, and yeah, that if everything was so rosy, everything would be rosy. Would be rosy. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be after using our mind to try and to, to try and deny, to deny it, yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Yes. And I said again, man must understand that they are the creatures primarily of the inordinate exercise of the animal appetites and desires and not of the exercise of the mind. And that they are to be eradicated by the same process in reverse order as to what was used in their creation. Now, of course, that makes a lot of logical sense. It does. Uh, but we often don't understand that. We, we, we start sort of, if we are not in complete denial of what we've created, we, we basically say, oh, I don't know why these things are created. Oh, 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 that bad thing happened today to me, but I don't know why. You know, and that is also myself just being in complete denial of what's inside of my, my soul personally. And it's not in my mind that's going to change it because it's not my mind that created it. Mm -hmm. Now, my mind can help me change it, by helping me access the emotions and appetites and desires that are inside of my soul that cause this creation. But, but, and, and certainly if my mind's in complete denial of that, it's not going to help it. But, but the reality is I can exercise my mind for the next thousand years and I'm still not going to eradicate the problem yes. unless I start addressing the emotion. And, and look, I love this par these few paragraphs really say a lot about dealing with causal emotion. You know, um, here you've said that, you know, this ordinate, inordinate exercise of these animal appetites and desires, which we were talking about earlier, these using these desires to get away from the pain that's really in our soul, mm. that creates badness. Mm. But the only way to reverse it is to do the same, do exercise our appetites and desires in reverse order, mm -hmm. which is to stop, you know wanting, stop using our will and our emotion and our force to avoid pain mm -hmm. and, and suppress pain, mm -hmm. uh, recognising that the suppression creates evil, mm -hmm. ah, we'll have to unsuppress, we'll have to allow, we'll have to express exactly. these darker things in order for them to, to heal and yeah. make room for goodness. Yeah. So it's all there in this message. Exactly. Yeah. And one thing I find quite interesting about this message and many people who criticise our teachings, right, is that, is that the very criticism of it, the emotionality of the teachings of divine truth aids the person to continue suppression, mm -hmm. which actually aids the individual to continue the creation of all the pain and suffering that occurs. So, so and, you can, and in a way, you can see the spirits behind this. Every time a person goes into some kind of emotional experience that is actually a true emotional experience, I'm not talking about ones that are fabricated or ones that are imagined, but ones that are real, you often find that the person gets criticised or denigrated by family, friends, media, all sorts of people, and spirits as well mm -hmm. around them. And that's because the spirits around them know that while these emotions remain in them, the spirits have got control. And the people around them, the family, friends and everyone know that while these emotions remain in them, the family's got control. Mm -hmm. Once we release these particular emotions, you for the first time will be in control. Your soul will be for the first time in real control of what's going on. And, and I find this is one of the sad things that I find whenever, whenever emotion is criticised, and here I'm speaking again about emotion that is real, not fabricated or imagined or just a tantrum. I'm talking about true causal emotions that are the cause of our existence. 
the, when these emotions are criticised, what we're really doing is aiding the suppression of the soul and aiding the, 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 continuation. the continuation of pain and suffering. Yes. And, the, and that, that's very unfortunate. Yeah. And this is something I was trying to get across to Padgett as well, that we can't deny the existence of these emotions and appetites that are out of harmony with law and then at the same time hope that we're going to have uh, less pain and suffering in our lives. It's impossible. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You were going to say something, babe? Right. Oh, just um, surrounding this idea of emotions, you mentioned a couple of times that you're speaking about real emotion. Yeah. <laughs> because um, it does, it, reversing these creations does require that we get real mm -hmm. about what our appetites and desires are yes. out of harmony with love. And yeah. I see that a lot of people, again, we've mentioned a few times in this discussion about people misusing what we say to further their unloving appetites and desires. I agree. They're saying, oh, I need to be emotional. I've just got to express myself. Oh, and actually they're When really they're being very unloving when they're expressing themselves, which is actually using their appetites and, and emotions yes. in a unlawful way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And Which is going to harm them further. Yeah, it's actually not what we're teaching. We're teaching no. them something very different, the reversal of that process. And but it takes it requires integrity to law yeah. and a sincerity to grow and a sincerity to love. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that's And what a sincerity for truth as well. The real yeah. truth, not just what we want to imagine ourselves to be or imagine what the problem is, but rather what the problem truly is from God's perspective. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So, um, of course, uh, I'm down to there, aren't yep. I? Of course, it must not be lost sight of that in using this process, the faculties of the mind must be brought into operation, just as they were in the creation of these existences. In other words, I'm saying here, well, look, we used our mind to go along with our unlawful appetites, which eventually created our sin and error and pain and suffering, we're going to need to use our mind in completely the opposite direction if we're ever going to recover from this, but, but the mind is not the cause. Yes. Right? We, just need, we need to use our mind a certain way. And the great fact to rem be remembered in this process is that these things are real mm -hmm. and not the things of the mere imagination, which is the equivalent of the founders, Miss Mary Baker Eddy, mortal mind. Mm -hmm. so, so we need to understand that they are not just things that we are imagining. That's not the creation of disease. They are actual creations. They are physical creations and spiritual it's, creations. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. Yeah. Yep. Now, when man grasps the meaning and thus explained of what these things really are and how they came into being, then he will be the more readily, then he will the more readily comprehend the way or means by which they are to be destroyed and never again permitted to become a part of his being. For while they do not by nature belong to his being, yet by reason of his being the creator of them, they are, so far as his consciousness is concerned, together with all the results flowing therefrom, a part of his being, and that part which keeps him in discord with the laws controlling his own existence. Now, that's quite a long sentence. I, and, I often and, joke that, <laughs> yep, both centuries, we both like long sentences. <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit of a problem we still have. But yeah. it's very hard to describe in, in any language on the planet what we're trying to mean. And this was a problem we had constantly in the pageant messages, of course, and this is why many of the sentences <laughs> became a bit long. But basically what I'm saying here, that it, we must understand that once we destroy and never any more allow to be a part of our being the things that we've currently created that cause our pain and suffering, mm -hmm. then of course, all the pain and suffering will be removed. And we need to understand that we are the creator of them and we are, and as a result, these things we have created are a part of our being while we're creating them. Yes. So, so even though God did not originally create us with the potential, you know, with the, um, you know, with pain and suffering, we need to understand that pain and suffering have become a part of us, not because God originally created them, mm -hmm. as many, even Christian fam uh, families believe, yeah. but 
because we have created them themselves. And whenever we create something, they actually do become a physical part of our life. Mm -hmm. They are something that are completely reflected back into our life. They are, in fact, a part of our soul, even, because we've created them. Mm -hmm. They've become a part of our soul. And we need to remove them in the same manner to which we created them. And this is a you know, very, very important thing. But we need to understand that just because God created us perfect and, and beautiful without these errors, it doesn't mean that these errors are now not a part of our soul. Yeah. So I see a lot of new age people going, yeah, the reality is everyone has a beautiful soul. Everybody is perfect. Yeah. No, I am can't agree. Yeah. God created the original perfect soul, but then we, through our own creations out of harmony with law, created a lot of imperfections in our soul. Mm -hmm. And this is something, and they are now a part of us. Yes. They are now a part of our being. I think in that phone call that you referred to that I was having with an old friend um, earlier, uh, she said to me, but Mary, even, even the murderer is, is God. We're all God. Uh, to which I said to her, no, I can't agree with that. And I don't think God's very murderous at all. <laughs> no, in fact, uh, God has no murderous tendencies no. whatsoever. God loves the murderer, absolutely. Mm. And God has compassion and the murderer And God has... never created them to be a murderer. No, God didn't put murder into their personality or nature. No. But God has created a system for them to heal from, from that situation and to never carry those emotions ever again. Exactly. Now, see, to me, that's a far more meaningful and empowered yeah. um, reality than just saying, well, we're all God and bad shit happens, yeah. really. And I, was just re and I was just reflecting, too, how it's interesting how the New Age person is almost identical to a Christian on this, in, yeah. in this regard to some degree, but often the flip side in, mm. in a sense. It's like, uh, like we've t spoken to many Christians who basically believe that God makes people's hearts hard. Now, how, <laughs> how can a loving being make somebody's hearts hard? Yeah. God would never choose to do such yeah. a thing. And, and yet the Bible itself does say that, that yeah. the Bible uh, in some places has said that God chose to make a certain person's heart heart or God chose certain people and then has not chosen other people mm -hmm. and these of course are false beliefs about God and and interestingly enough and the reason why I bring that up is because here what we're saying what the Christian is saying God chose to make the heart hard mm -hmm. the the new age person is saying no God never made anybody's heart hard and who knows where it came from? Yeah, <laughs> like, but that's God anyway the hard heart is the God. hard heart is God yeah. and and, and you can see why a lot of these false beliefs get created. Hey? From, from one set of false beliefs, everybody rebels and then they create a whole new set of false beliefs to yes. rebel against the old yeah. set of false beliefs. Yeah. And they are also untrue, unfortunately. And this is why divine truth challenges everybody because, because almost everybody is going to hear something from us that confronts their current belief system. I've noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just getting back to the specifics of your paragraph, you yeah. were talking about like us recognising that God didn't create us with mm. this evil part of us. Mm. But you, you said when ma men grasped the meaning and thus explained of what these things really are, so which is what you've just explained, that actually this pain, this suffering, this evil comes as a result of us exercising these animal appetites out of harmony with law continually mm. all the time mm -hmm. so i love that in this paragraph you say once you understand that that's how it got there mm -hmm. now you're going to more readily comprehend the way or means for to remove it to, to destroy this yeah. this issue and i see a lot of people just resisting how this mess got started mm. in their own life in the whole world whatever mm -hmm. nobody wants to go there because it's a bit scary like mm. what are we going to